I think we're on Mars. <laughs> and we're in our little balloon here. Oh, we're gonna bounce. Yep. <laughs> I love that. It looks like we did land during the day here though. There's not many mobs, which is a good sign. Hey guys, and welcome back to Grectic New Horizons. Where we did, in fact, make it to Mars here. First thing we have to do here is secure our source of oxygen again. Alright, it seems we are now positive on oxygen. We're producing a rate of 162, we are required 160 to keep this oxygen bubble up and running. Alright, so we did bring our machines in order to scan the area. We need our seismic prospector, which we maybe should have upgraded, this is still only LV. The first one I guess we'll do inside our new base here. So first we scan our data stick, then we send it through our printer, print off the book in the assembly machine, and let's see what sort of ores we have around here. Basically just garbage, look at this, sulfur, gold, quartz, and more sulfur. All of this stuff we can find on other places. Not a great start, let's do some more prospecting around this area. Yeah, that is more like it. So I done two more prospects around this area. The first one up here we got an arsenic vein, which I think is unique to Mars. But we did manage to find a dash vein here, which also contains shelite and tungstate. These are the materials we were hand handling last episode in order to get tungsten. So we got the miner placed on this thing. And the most recent scan I just done there also got us a tungstate vein, which is more tungstate and shelite, along with some lithium. So I think we'll place our second miner on that one. I didn't end up bringing the fluid drilling rigs in the end. That may turn out to be a mistake, but uh, we can always come back for the fluids later on. And the fluids we can find here are the salt water and the chlorobenzene, I think it is. We don't need them at the moment, they're not absolutely essential for us. Where is this tongue state? There it is, right there. Yeah, second miner we want right in the centre of this chunk here. Oh, and I didn't bring the combustion generator. Please tell me it's in the chest. Oh no. <laughs> Did we leave it here? Ah yes we did, okay. That could have significantly extended the time with that we were here on Mars. Okay, you are getting fuel, you should be getting power. And we're mining, cool. Oh yeah, look at that, we're also getting meteoric iron here as well. This is really hard to come by on the moon, but I think here we can get it much easier. So yeah, what else do we want to accomplish here on Mars today? Well, we obviously want to find the Mars dungeon, so we're definitely going to keep our eye out for that. And we also got some more fallen meteors. What do these things contain? Oh, more meteoric iron. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's a slimeling. Are you friendly? Oh, we leave him. He doesn't seem to be harming anyone. <laughs> there is life on Mars. But yeah, other than the ores in the dungeon, I don't think there's really much else we need to collect from here at the moment. Oh, we got more slimelings. So while those other two miners... Uh, do their thing, I guess. I'm probably just going to mine up one of these things manually. I would quite like to grab another redstone vein, and it's going to be convenient here. I think it's going to be easier to mine on Mars, since there's less junk to pick up, basically. So, yeah, I'm going to mine out this redstone vein, and then we'll see where our miners are at. Should be right underneath us here. Alright, so I mined out a decent chunk of that redstone vein. I didn't get quite as much ruby as I would have hoped. I think I might move the miner there before we go. I did take a little break to let the miners run though, and this tongue state vein is actually done. And we're now mining out this pitch blend, which gives us uraninite as well. And the first miner is now on arsenic vein. We're just on a quick resupply mission here for some more oxygen. Before going to check out the Mars dungeon. If I remember right, this is the one with the creeper in it as the boss, so uh, I'm not really sure what to expect here in GTNH. I remember it being super super easy in the Vine journey, but uh, things are a little bit different here, so we'll see how it goes. Alright, let's do this. Nice and friendly greeting once again. And the super quick zombies I cannot hit. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go, go. 
Oh, we're actually almost dead here. We should be careful. Yeah, hold up. Let's regen a little bit. Endless corridors through this dungeon again. Ah, we made it. This looks like the boss room. I think this is where the creeper spawns as well. Yep, there he is. Do we hit the TNT back him? I already forgot. I think we do. Yeah, that must be what it is. Okay, this is gonna be a long fight. Oh, what now? We just keep hitting them? Okay. One hit. Hey, we got him. <laughs> Give me my dungeon key and all of the experience. Let's see what we get here. More garbage. More garbage, yep. <laughs> oh, we got a new food though. Deluxe cheeseburger. And the cargo rocket schematic. Huh. We'll take the molybdenum, I guess. And also the one ring. I don't know what this does, but I don't think I want to pick this up. Yeah, you know what? We're going to leave this here. There's a warning on the tooltip. Let's just... Let's just not mess with that. <laughs> we well, got the schematic. Can we turn this into the rocket? It doesn't look like it, okay. So we're going to have to find another dungeon, I guess. We need the tier 3 rocket schematic. Oh, wait a second, maybe not. It does have a shaped crafting recipe. It's not shapeless. We have to put it in the top slot. Yeah, so we're actually done here. We just have to collect some of these dungeon bricks. Oh, this place. I remember this. Yeah, this is full of bacterial sludge. We'll come back for it if we need it. I don't actually think we need that right now. For now, I think we just do a little bit more mining and let our automatic miners run until they finish. And then I think we just head home here. Again, we can always come back for the fluids later on if we need it. Why is there a torch there? I didn't place this torch. Do we have company? <laughs> Are the aliens back here? Who knows? So it's been a while later, it seems that both of our miners have now finished. I have been doing a bunch more prospecting around Mars and we were able to get another dash vein. Let's make sure that we pick up the quest requirements. So in the EV tab we have to hold some pitch blend and uraninite, which we did mine out here. Aha! We also need to hold the dash, shielite and tongue state. We got the shielite and tongue state, the dash I think might be in the other miner. Oh yeah, I, ar <laughs> I already collected the other miner. Here is our other chest. And the quest. Ah, that was a very lovely surprise. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let's get out of here. And like the last time, I think we just grab everything, right? We can always replace it if we end up coming back. So everything that we gathered should be in these four chests. Mission success. Let's go. Oh man, this looks so cool. <laughs> we have liftoff. You know, I didn't check the fuel levels before we took off there. I'm glad it was enough to get us back. The overworld, yes. Aha, we made it. <laughs> and there's our rocket again. Hopefully we have a slightly more safe landing than last time. Oh, look at all the mobs. No way. Okay, we're safe. We're back. So now we have the really, really fun task of organizing all these chests, starting to process all these materials, and we'll decide how we want to tackle the next parts of this quest book. Yeah, how do we want to progress? That is the million dollar question. <laughs> I really don't know, there's too much choice. 
Oh, and it looks like we've only got an hour left on our nuclear reactor fuels here. But yes, I did take some time and expand our clean room. The original reason I wanted it over here was to have access to the power coming off of this nuclear reactor. But actually, I just ended up going with the combustion generators again. These things are super, super inefficient, but I mean, we're using batteries here and we don't run that many recipes inside the clean room, at least not for the EV power. But yeah, we do also have a mix of LV, MV, HV and EV stuff in here, all of which have one combustion generator on top of a 4x battery buffer. And since we can't open that door down there, we have a second little entrance next to our nuclear reactor here with the elevator again. And then yeah, we just have the four tiers of machines, LV, MV, HV, EV. And I've also set up some drawers here for the common circuit components. I think maybe the only other machine that we didn't have in our previous clean room is this fluid extractor for solar and alloy, which is round robin between all of the circuit assembling machines to give them all fluid. And the only other changes were using cable diodes instead of machine holes. The machine holes only allow input for one amp, whereas the diodes can go up to, I believe, all 16 amps, but we have the four amp version in there. So that was just a little side project I wanted to tackle since we're going to need a lot more circuits and let me explain a little bit. So I was digging through our quest book to see how we wanted to progress and obviously our mission is still to move bases here into the void but it's going to be a huge challenge like this is this involves so much more than I originally thought. So to get to this quest we need to unlock IV which means that we just need a stack of tungsten steel. The processing of the Mars ore should give us that but then we also have to visit the asteroid belts. And this is going to take the tier 3 rocket. The tier 3 rocket is going to take a lot of dash, which we got on Mars. So I was thinking, you know, this isn't too bad. However, we do also need 19 ingots of platinum here. Plus the next tier of thermal padding, which is a lot more tungsten. And we also need this fluid for the thermal padding. Normally I'm not too bad with the pronunciation, but I, I ain't even going to try this time. <laughs> and the fluid is not the only challenge we face here. We also need the rocket control computer, which needs an IV assembly machine inside a clean room. That means that we need to make IV machines and we also need to generate IV power. Plus we can no longer use our C10 boosted diesel to power the rocket. But we have to take things just one step at a time. So <laughs> first we're going to make some more ender fluid conduits and item conduits as we are now completely out I think. Oh no we have some item conduits we just don't have any more fluid. So I was making up some more PTFE here. Which we have to send through the fluid solidifier. We need to make the ingots and then extrude this into the PTFE pipe and then assemble this into the conduits. Actually, is there a cheaper recipe just to go straight to the pipe? No, this is half an ingot and the extruder is gives us two per bar. But yeah, basically what we're going to be doing to start here is to get our processing for tungstate going. Actually, we should try to get the full stack. We need more PTFE. What are we missing here? I think just chlorine. Yeah, we should have chlorine over here. All right, we got the full stack of the ender fluid conduits here going. So as we were doing last episode, there is a process to turn tungstate into shielite. But honestly, I think we're just going to bypass that. At least until we move bases. I mean, we have a ton of shielite ore here, which I guess we want to, what, macerate and then thermal centrifuge? Well, I don't know, actually. We, we kind of want molybdenum and calcium and manganese. I'm not really sure what the best way is. Either way, we're going to macerate this to begin with. So then we are going to need our EV chemical reactor, which we have here. And not everything is going to be an EV either, because, I mean, power is still an issue. So only the machines that necessarily have to be an EV will be an EV. The rest will probably just do an MV or maybe HV. Oh, that's right, and we will also need another blast furnace for this as well. Ideally. Although we can get away with just running this at HV. Yeah, you know what? I think we'll do something similar to what we have over here for titanium. And we'll put another blast furnace on this side for tungsten. And I think the processing for tungsten and shielite is going to look something like this. One of the things we're missing here is a pump on this tank, which is our storage here for hydrogen gas. It's not completely ideal that it's this one here, since we only get hydrogen here if we electrolyze specific uh, dusts. This is sort of the issue when you don't have that easy of a fluid transport network, like Applied Energistics, which <laughs> we'll get to one day. But for now we're just going to take from this backlog. So if we put a pump on here, that's going to go to this tiny steel fluid pipe, which is connected up all the way over to this tank over here. We should see some hydrogen being inserted here any second. Yes, we are. Okay, it's automatically being inserted into this chemical reactor, where it mixes with chlorine. That gives us hydrochloric acid, gets stored in the buffer tank below here. 
And then it's inserted into this chemical reactor, which is mixes it with shelite. So the shelite gives us calcium chloride and tungstic acid. The calcium chloride is sent into this buffer drawer and then inserted into this electrolyzer, which will electrolyze into calcium dust and chlorine. The chlorine then goes to onto the right hand side and then is put back into this chemical reactor as cells to be mixed with the hydrogen gas. And we'll loop round for hydrochloric. This isn't a perfect ratio either, so we do have to import some more chlorine. I think it only gives us half back. But the fluid pipe for the hydrogen, which goes into this tank, is also buffered here and then collected by this inner fluid conduit, which puts it into the input hatch of the blast furnace. So I had a slight change of plan here. We only have the three original blast furnaces here. And the reason for that is whenever we get the tungstic acid, this goes through the blast furnace at HV. However, the tungsten trioxide dust must be smelted at EV. So I thought we'd just use the same blast furnace for both since they're quite quick recipes. So the tungstic acid from the chemical reactor gets inserted into the blast furnace, output to our output chest here. And then we just need a little extract filter on this thing for only tungsten trioxide. Extract on brown. That should be sent back into the input hatch where it's mixed on circuit two with the hydrogen gas that we're inserting into the input hatch. And five seconds later, it will give us tungsten dust. So this is not an absolutely perfect system. We do have to import some amount of chlorine here. Of course, we have to provide this with she light as well. And we will have to monitor the power here. As you can see, the, the reactor looks like it turned itself on since we are now draining the batteries in the battery buffer. Although the buffer on this thing is actually huge. So I think we should be okay for power so long as we have nuclear fuels. And in fact, between episodes, I did batch craft quite a bit of this stuff. We have enough for another 48 hours worth of fuel here. And this thing doesn't run permanently. So yeah, that is enough for a while. <laughs> but yeah, we're getting our tungsten. All we need to do now, oh yeah, look at all the she light. So I don't actually think we need the calcium, right? Unless we were maybe doing the tungstate processing, which I think we're probably just going to leave until we move to our new base. So instead, I think we'll just macerate twice and then centrifuge for the manganese. And the manganese we can use for stainless steel. So yeah, now with the tungsten, I believe the tungsten is also used in IV. I think it's part of the IV machine hall. Yeah, we need tungsten cable for here. So not all of this we want to make into tungsten steel, which is just a mixer recipe with steel dust. We'll just do this step manually for now. But yeah, as we saw last episode when you we were trying to coat the platinum cable for the nuclear reactor. Actually, that wasn't last episode, was it? I'm losing track of all the days here. <laughs> Yeah, if we check the recipe for tungsten cable, we have to either use styrene butadiene rubber or, or silicon rubber. We have the silicon rubber semi-automated over there, but it does also take some foil. So in FTB interactions, I think this was only if you didn't have regular rubber, but here it looks like it's required. We either have to use the foil of the wire material or we can use polyphenylene, which I think can be used for anything. So I think we should set up some sort of processing for polyphenylene, which is this quest over here in EV. Unsurprisingly, this is going to take more chlorine and also benzene, something called sodium sulfide, which we then just combine in, I think, a chemical reactor. Yes, sodium sulfide, oxygen and dichlorobenzene in a chemical reactor will give us molten polyphenylene. And then we just have to fluid solidify it into the sheets and then metal bend into the foil. And this is what we can use to coat all of our cables. So once again, we've got a bunch more machine crafting to do, and I think we may actually be out of circuits for this. Well, maybe not actually, we have five HVs. We need an HV chemical reactor, two chemical reactors at LV. We have one already here. I think there's another one in this chest. We'll take a low voltage battery buffer. We need some combustion generators again. I feel like I'm forever making those combustion generators. <laughs> Let's see what else. A fluid solidifier, I think. Yeah, we can do that at LV. All right, I've been doing a bunch of crafting. I think I've got all the materials for this. And I'm never very good at doing this while, uh, while recording at the same time, so let's give this a go. <laughs> First step is going to be dichlorobenzene. We need chlorine and benzene. Benzene we're getting from this distillation tower. Should be this output hatch right here. So, in fact, what we're going to do to make this a bit easier, I maybe should switch this out with fluid conduits. But I think I'd rather save those. We'll keep them on the separate lines. We will, however, move the output hatch to the other side, though. Put it here instead. As long as it's on the same level, it should still output benzene. And that way we can put the fluid pipe like this. And we want this fluid pipe to hook up to the chemical reactor, which is going to be sitting right here. I think we're going to put the setup on this space. So we're going to buffer the benzene into a super tank, since we don't have a super tank on the end of the distillation tower there. That's going to be exported to this chemical reactor via pump. We have to also mix this with chlorine. So we want to do the recipe circuit two with the chlorine cells. This is going to give us the dichlorobenzene cells. And I want the hydrochloric as the fluid. 
And that is so that we can connect to this Ender Fluid Conduit Network, which also hooks up to all these machines here. And this will take the hydrochloric acid and send it down to this LCR down here, which makes PVC. From here, I think we'll kind of work backwards a little bit. We'll have our fluid solidifier coming out of the HV chemical reactor. And then the last one here is for that dust, whatever it's called, sodium sulfide. Yeah. I think all we need to do now is wire this up. We've got a low voltage battery buffer, which has to feed these three machines here. Then we'll need to extend the fuel line for the combustion generators for seat in. Oh, this is gonna connect all the way down, isn't it? Although we will move the battery buffer over to the other side. I think it'll be, there's a little bit more space on this side. And do connect here. Okay, and now we just have to send the items where they need to be, and also power this chemical reactor here. Hooking up the rest though is easier said than done, hold on. <laughs> Molten polyphenylene sulfide. I forgot the cast again. I done that the last time. <laughs> Anyways, I think we got everything hooked up here properly. This thing here shouldn't be connected. I did forget about the quest though, and we have to pick up pretty much all the materials throughout this process. Starting with the benzene, so I did actually manually turn on this distillation tower again. Since it's automatically turned off based on the fact that we have a full tank of ethylene, I'm assuming, and also a full tank of toluene here. Honestly, we really don't need that much of this uh, this thing, considering it turns into plates and then foils, which will effectively 4x this fluid. So our buffer of benzene here is going to last us for a while. So we pick up the benzene, we need to pick up dichlorobenzene, which means that we should enable all these machines again. Pick up some more chlorine here. We're actually kind of running out of chlorine. We may have to take another trip back to Mars for the fluid. I knew this would happen. Anyways, we also want mufflers on all these things. Very, very loud machines. Excellent, this makes us our dichlorobenzene. So we also have the sodium sulfide being provided by this one, which is just on its own channel. And then oxygen here is being supplied via this conduit. So we also have oxygen being buffered right here, which it looks like we're actually out of. That is then taken up on this conduit and sent onto all of those machines up there. And actually comes from our electrolyzer centrifuge set up here. But it looks like we will have to electrolyze a few more things over there for more oxygen. Either that or just take from the supply that's over here. Like, yeah, look at this. We have, we have a full tank here. We'll just shuffle some things around. Dichlorobenzene. Enable the reactor again. And this will send its contents down to the fluid solidifier. <laughs> oh, it wants, it, it wants me to pick it up again. I just put all this back. Come on, game. 96 cells of oxygen, really? Oh, and I just realized a little flaw in our system here. So because we're taking the oxygen cells from this tank and we want it as item form, we also get a salt byproduct out of this, which we're just storing in this buffer drawer above. But sometimes the salt is pulled by one of these conveyors into the tank and then put back into the chemical reactor input slot. And that will block the oxygen cells from being inserted back in here. So I just moved our tank for oxygen down a block and that allows us to put an item conduit and filter the extract on this thing. So that we're only ever extracting empty cells on the right hand side. And the left hand side is filtered to extract only salt which will be put in here. Although it looks like we're out of oxygen again. That can't be. No way we used that much. You're connected up here underneath. Connected all the way until here. Aha! <laughs> this looks like our culprit right here. I think maybe I must have broke that when I was running this line. This, uh, this new wrench that we got is actually super powerful. Look at the mining speed on this thing. It's actually 72. And the old vanadium steel wrench is only mining speed of 12. That really, really made a difference when I was moving all of that plascrete over. Aha, now we're running. Okay, awesome. All we need to do now is grab the mold for this thing. Our, what was it, 96 cells of oxygen for the quest. And also two stacks of these polyphenylene sheets. Oh, wait a second. Why doesn't this work? Are we plugged in? I'm sure I plugged you in. Yes, you're plugged in. <laughs> Are you turned off? Ah, that's what the problem is. So we could maybe add a buffer up here for like a drawer and then just extract with some conduits to buffer this thing. But honestly, I don't think we really need to do that at this stage. We'll just let it buffer in the internal buffer of the machine. But I think with this, this is also a good point to wrap up this episode. I'll try to keep uh, this drawer full of shelite so that we can get some more tungsten. Almost out of nuclear fuel as well. Yeah, it looks like we need to centrifuge some more impure. And this chest is way too full. Way too full. <laughs> oh boy.
Hey, at least we're getting platinum for this, which I think is going to be our next challenge next episode. So this whole left side of the quest tree over here in Eevee is for platinum processing. That's going to be fun. I think we'll tackle that next time because we do need a lot of platinum for Eevee and Ivy. And I think I'm also going to start crafting up some more circuits as well. It should be a lot easier now that we have this set up in here. Oh, and also clean up the hole we made here. Anyways, this is our two stacks of polyphenylene sulfide. I always got to say that wrong. <laughs> that is our quest anyway, and this is going to do us for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time for some more Greg Tech New Horizons.